Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the news from Shuruq TV. Today's headlines include Registration of 38 new coronavirus infections, including one fatality. Sudan's peace parties agreed to allocate to that for 30% of its resources. Sudan denies rumors about sale of its port in the Red Sea. The Federal Ministry of Health announced the registration of new 38 coronavirus pandemic cases, including one fatality. The report pointed out that all new cases have been registered in Khartoum State, bringing the total number of cases of infections since the beginning of the pandemic in Sudan to 275 cases, including 22 deaths, while one case has recovered, bringing the total number of recoveries to 21 cases. In the wake of the spread of COVID-19, export of certain medicines, including paracetamol and hydrochloroquine, manufactured in India, was put on hold by government of India. However, following requests received from various foreign missions based in India requesting exemptions of export of paracetamol and such other medicines on commercial basis, nearly 4,000 plus requests from 63 countries and regions are being cleared by government of India. These requests also include supply of 72,000 paracetamol bottles to Sudan. The Sudanese government and Darfur groups under the Sudanese Revolutionary Front, SRF, have reached an agreement to allocate 40% of the Western Sudan region's resources to its development for 10 years. The agreement was reached during a negotiation session that took place on Sunday through video conferencing facilitated by the European Union in Khartoum and Juba. The two parties to the negotiation of the Darfur track have agreed that the Western Sudan region will get 40% of the oil and minerals extracted in Darfur for 10 years, said the deputy chief mediator Dio Matok in a briefing to the media in Juba after the meeting. The office of the Sudanese Prime Minister Dr. Abdullah Hamdok has denied rumors that were circulated on various media outlets that Sudanese authorities have sold out its main seaport in the Red Sea. In a press statement issued by the press secretary in the office of the Prime Minister, al barraq Nazir, said that there were false news items being circulated recently by some media outlets that the government is planning to sell the seaport in Port Sudan. The Prime Minister's office affirms that this news is fake and baseless. The Sudanese government will not decide on such crucial and strategic matters without consulting the civil population and other stakeholders. Prime Minister Dr. Abdullah Hamadok congratulated the Sudanese people on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan and sent his good wishes to the Muslims in Sudan and the entire world. He called on the citizens to maintain the Sudanese values of unity and joint work to overcome the different challenges facing the country. Together, heading toward New Sudan, he added. Sovereign Council member Shamsuddin al Kabashi, a member of the government delegation to the peace negotiation, and Mohammed Hassan al Taishi, spokesperson for the government delegation to the peace negotiations, met with representatives of the Troika, the European Community, and Germany. The meeting discussed the peace talks in Juba and the developments concerning the tracks of North, Centre, and East. The three African non-permanent members of the UNSC, known as the A3, have questioned the viability of UNAMID's exit from Darfur without calling openly to maintain the hybrid mission. In his briefing, Jean-Pierre Lacroix, UN peacekeeping chief, told the meeting that the closure of airports, seaports in response to the COVID-19, has rendered impractical effective exit by 31st of October. Lacroix further pointed out to the enduring threats to civilians and high anxiety level among the IDPs over UNAMID's exit, stressing the drawdown process must be managed carefully and should not signal the lack of concerns related to the protection of civilians in Darfur. 
Ambassador Jerry Mattia of South Africa to the UN, for his part, said that it's imperative to align a follow-up UN mission to the priorities and objectives set by the Sudanese Prime Minister Hamadok in his call for a UN Chapter 6 mission post-UNAMIT's withdrawal. The Secretary General of Sudanese General Secretariat for Intellectual Property, Hatim Elias Musa, called Sudanese pharmacists to make optimum use for ecological and diversity in Sudan. Musa said in press statement that as part of the existing perilous conditions of the menacing COVID-19 pandemic engulfing the entire world, we in the Sudanese General Secretariat for Intellectual Property would grab this opportunity to extend our greetings to all innovative and creative Sudanese individuals in all fields of science. Musa invited all Sudanese researchers engaged in applied and scientific research in the areas of therapeutic and medicinal herbs to grasp the challenge of the pandemic to develop a therapeutic and medicinal research database and to gear scientific research to play its destined advanced role in the general strategies of the Sudanese state. The United Nations World Food Programme, the WFP in Sudan, received a contribution of $1 million from the government of Japan for the treatment of acute malnutrition of 127,000 infants, mothers and pregnant women in Central and West Darfur states. We are extremely grateful for Japan's support, which will enable the WFP to treat acute malnutrition and prevent morbidity and mortality associated with severe acute malnutrition through provision of specialized nutrition foods, said the WFP Sudan country director, Dr. Hamid Nuru. Nearly 10% of young children in West Darfur and over 15% of children in central Darfur are malnourished. Investing in nutrition enables children to grow to their full potential and it's one of the most cost-effective drivers for development and prosperity. And here we remind you with the headlines. Registration of 38 new coronavirus infections, including one fatality. Sudan's peace parties agreed to allocate to Darfur 40% of its resources. Sudan denies rumors about sale of its port in Red Sea. Thank you so much for following and see you next time.